He showed us a way, a legend, a highway, and even today, some are making their way onto it. Uh. Would it be easy? Nah, it'd be surmounting. It'd mean a lot of sweat, dirt, and pavement pounding. A road that needs commitment, beginning at dawn. Some approach it like a sprint, but forget it. It's long, and around every corner, there'd be a hiss of a whisper, like an invitation to cave under the pressure, to disengage, to mentally check out. Stop running so hard, you can sit this one out. And it mostly shows up when the road is most trying, at the tip of your limits, when you feel like you're dying. Uh, expectations for the road less traveled bring defeat come sit down yeah have a seat what if jesus sat it out when the caller was ringing the thorns the accusation the nails the beating what if the pain of our sin on the cross was too tough and conquering death was just asking too much yeah it's a lot can't imagine the fear and doubt but what would we celebrate if he sat that one out the fight to slay death was replaced by a slouch our symbol symbolizing failure not clout what example will we follow if that's all that he wrote the smooth sailing sure success easy does it approach what if the prophecies of prophets sang the wrong tune because he quit with purpose scream this time is for you. You, you, you but history has engraved the truth the outcome he did not succumb fight on Good evening. This is New Hope F Fellowship under Chief Joseph Pastor Prude and Central Prude. We welcome you today for Facebook. Um, and I am Prophet Chris Reynolds. And this is my wife, Apostle Lenise Reynolds. And today we're going to open up with a special presentation from Apostle De Denise. And later we'll come back to in introduce to you our speaker for tonight. i 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, at New Hope Fellowship, you never know what we're going to do. We're a supernatural ministry, so we move by the Holy Spirit. And on tonight, we just want to thank Apostle Denise for that awesome dance of worship. She's already prepared the atmosphere. And tonight, we've been blessed and honored to have with us Apostle Robbie Hare. We thank God for her. She's going to come and bring the word on tonight. The atmosphere is prepared. We thank you guys for watching on tonight. So hey, please open up your ears and your heart and your heart to receive her on tonight. And we thank God for you, Apostle Robbie, for how dedicated you are to Apostle, Apostle Prude and Apostle Sandra for your love and all that you do behind the scenes that none of us never know. All the warfare, all the prayers, all the things you do, how you armor bear it, Mom. God, your reward, tr trust me, it's going to be great. So tonight, after, it's going to be, my husband said, off the chain, y'all. <laughs> Amen. So we want to let you, let you just minister. Be who God has called you to be, woman of God. We love you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle Denise. My nerves are all over the place. <laughs> when things are not the norm, you know you have to do what's necessary to keep your relationship straight and, and focused on God. And uh, Sister Denise and I used to dance together. A lot of people, she taught me, you know, I was a member of her team for a long time. And I really appreciate and love her, whether she knows it or not, because she taught us well. She taught us well. And so that dance just really made my heart wonderful. Okay, so tonight my message is, what is yes? What is yes? I was going to say, what does yes mean? But no, what is yes? Yes is what activates a thing. If you don't say yes, it's not going to happen. So what is yes? I'm of a certain generation that your word is your bond. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Hey, throw up that fist. I got you. Your word is your bond. And if you see it, yes, then you would do it. You know, that's, that's what you said. You were going to do it. The word bond has a couple of definitions that I would like to share. The first one is... A bond is an agreement binding two or more parties. In essence, it's a covenant. That's a covenant. And two, a piece of material, I added, or a substance, that serves to bind or unite. When you give a yes, you're binding, you're uniting. Your yes is an agreement to get something accomplished that is necessary for the purpose of the per person asking. Basically, you're putting your wherewithal, wherewithal, all your gifts, all your talents, everything that you got, and you're uniting with the other person and purpose to get something accomplished. Yes also has several def definitions related to usage. And the main definition that I want to use in regards to yes is an act or instance of agreeing or assenting by the use of the word yes. That came from Webster's Third, uh, Webster's Third New International Dictionary. I have one. Um, my office was cleaning out one time, and they didn't want this dictionary. It's about four inches thick, and it was printed in 1961, so it's got the old world English in it, so it's a good thing. I said, I, I took that one. <laughs> it gives five definitions before it actually gives the, use it, the, the definition for the word yes, and it says in each of those five definitions, it begins with yes is used as a function word. Your yes is functioning, okay? A function word, um, your yes should be creating or doing something, okay? A f to function. I like this. The action for which a person or a thing is specifically fitted, used, or responsible. Your yes fits together with something else and gets something accomplished. 
or simple, for which a thing exists. That's what a function is, for which a thing exists. Your yes exists for somebody and or a specific purpose. God knows the plans he has for you, so your yeses are already out there in the atmosphere. And another de uh, definition to function is the activity appropriated to the nature or position of a person or a thing. Your yes is appropriated to the situation at hand, and you are saying you have the talents or the skills to accomplish what was asked of you. When thinking of the second definition, and in all instances, you should be careful what you do with your yes. Okay, on the internet, it, it says the origin of the word yes is an old English word, either geese or guys, G-E-S-E -E or G-I-S-E, from an uh, unrecorded phrase meaning, may it be so. So when you say yes, it's supposed to happen, okay? So when I was doing this, God was like, okay, I'm getting all of this. This is good stuff. So he gave me this scripture, the only scripture, not the only scripture. I did read and I did some homework, but this is the scripture for the night. Matthew 5, 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Now that's a little bit deep, ain't it? Okay, say yes or yes, say no or no, you know. But the passing translation, a simple yes or no will suffice. Anything beyond this springs from a deceiver. That's too much, ain't it? A deceiver. Yes, I'm going to do it. No, I can't do it. Let's be specific, okay? In the Greek definition, the word is pronounced nahe, N-A-H-E-E. -E. And it just has a, a primary particle, part, particle of strong affirmation. Yes, even so, surely truth Verily, yea, or yes. Now, back in the dictionary, the even so truly short, those are those function words. They have the definition as to where you may or may not use it. Excuse me. Where you may or may not be using the word yes. Okay. He gave me a couple of things. Uh, he gave me four things, and I couldn't figure out why he gave me the fourth one until I read the Passion Translation. Okay, so... Our yes indicates relationship. We start this walk off by saying yes to God, okay? In some instances, it's not a true yes because everybody not doing everything they should for God. They doing the best they can, some of them doing some of what they can, and some of them just go to church on Sunday. So that yes, thank you so much, that yes is not always a true yes, but they still have the relationship with God. And you can look around your own life and determine whether or not it's a true yes or not, and that's up to you. <clears throat> In the initial commandments, God said, we are not to have any other gods before him. And so if something is taking priori priority over your relationship with God, whatever that thing is, is an idol. And we should, not, we should be thinking about clearing out the pathways of the monuments and things from the past so we can get a clear view from God and become more productive. Your yes is productive. Our yes shows our relationship with God. It should be reflecting what we have learned from him and the love we get from him. Our yes should not try to replace him. In so many instances, people say yes to be the savior of a situation, and that is not our job. Our yes should be in relationship with the situation. I give more yeses to the people that I know because I know them. I know they're not trying to hurt me or swindle me or do anything. One time I made Prophet Will laugh because uh, I was about two or three years into uh, the administrative position back then. And so I told him I was bamboozled. <laughs> I had no idea what that yes was going to entail. But I really was. Yeah, hoodwink too. I used that one too after I used bamboozled. But 
it still came out that the yes is a good thing. Okay, so I function in my yes. I function in my yes. Then after he gave me the relationship part of it, he said, do you love your neighbor as yourself? So first, you have to deal with yourself. And sometimes we can tell whether or not you love yourself by the way you treat other people. So we can see whether or not your love is pure by what comes out at us. And it's hard to love somebody when you don't love yourself. And if you go into your heart and see what you need to deal with, your love will begin to flow freer, freely and have a greater authority. So our yes is love. And love is yes, okay? It is a yes that shows we are willing to go that extra mile for someone, to assist someone, or to pour into someone. It's very hard to do this if there is no love, okay? There are some people that have never, ever engaged the stranger. My son used to say, you talk to anybody. And I told him, I said, it's no harm in speaking to anybody. And if they don't respond or engage, at least the love went out. It was a love that was able to be extended that may or may not bring somebody else into the kingdom. So we have to know whether or not we love our neighbor as ourselves. and yes is love, okay? Next he gave me, do you study to show yourself approved? We can put a big question mark there because studying his word shows us how we should act, what we should think, and how we should feel about absolutely everything and everybody. In studying the word of God, you get the best instructions and information for deliverance and progress. There is nothing new under the sun, and God put his wisdom in, he put through his wisdom, put it all in the Bible. And we used to say it when we was young, the basic instructions before leaving earth, the Bible. Yes, everything is in there, what you need to know, how you need to deal with your situation. If you commit yourself to studying, you will find it. And it's in the Bible. When you read it for yourself, you are going to get things to help others. But the main thing is to strengthen your relationship. This third thing connects to commitment. A yes is a commitment. You are saying I will accomplish what was asked of me so that the thing may be so. You like that one? May be so. In studying the word of God, we get over our hangups that might interfere with the yes that is going to change our life. The Bible tells me not to look at their faces. This is a situation where you know that you're hearing from God that you have to do something, but you may not particularly care for who you got to do it for or who you got to do it with. That has nothing to do with what God wants you to do. You have to put all that to the side and do what he told you to do. That yes means um, I can get things accomplished. I can get something from this. I can function and be able to be able to uh, go forward. I'm committed to this, yes, so I'm going to make it go. We love in the kingdom, blah, 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 this one, that one. That one. It really don't matter. When you go to your job, you don't go blah, 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 on this one and that one. You do what you're supposed to do. So God said, don't look at their faces. Get it done. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> I am committed to performing the acts of God as laid out in his word. When we commit to God, we are committing to his purpose for our life. With commitment comes endurance. Your, may, your yes may last a whole lot longer than you thought it would. <laughs> a lot of people say yes and they get in it and it goes on and on and on and on. But as long as God is telling you yes, you stay. As long as God is saying it has to be, you stay. When you say, I do, as long as it ain't one of the real reasons, you stay. You work it out. When you sign that line, your name on that dotted line, you make them payments until it's over with. You get a child, guess what? 18 is a magic number for the world. It ain't, it ain't going nowhere. I love it. I am laughing. I am laughing. 
my baby just turned 30 in March, and my oldest child will be 40 in December. I am laughing. Guess what? It's my baby girl and my baby boy. I only got two. <laughs> They steal my babies. I committed to that thing. I made that thing go. I'm still mine. Yes, you know, it, it's a commitment. What can you say? Uh, these types of commitments take a long time, but if your yes was sanctioned by God, it will last. With God in it, it's going to stay. It's going to endure. It will last. And so this is why I was, I was glad I read the Passion Translation, because he gave me deception. I was like, deception? Before he gave it to me, um, I was going, things were popping into my mind and popping in my mind. And like it says, a simple yes or no will suffice. Anything beyond this springs from a deceiver. Sometimes your yes may be extracted through deception or involved deception. This still does not stop your yes from being a yes. You get that thing done and you get out of it as soon as you can. That deception is there. Um, remember, your yes means may it be so. You have to accomplish that thing no matter what. Just get it done. This is what he gave me. The main thing about deception is that the enemy is trying to take the yes away or he is trying to pervert the results by either getting you to say no or altering the yes so that the results are not as God intended. Wow. That's intense, ain't it? Because lots of times, this is why it's best to have your own relationship with God. You go to other people, and they may have motives. And so they're getting your yes to bend to their way. So you have to have your own relationship with God so that you can be focused and know that your yes is yes and you are hearing it directly from God. Okay, we can see the deception in Jesus' life. Like when he left the baptism and went into the wilderness, didn't Satan himself come up and try and get him? He was on him. He was like, you know, do this. If you throw yourself down, and if you eat this, I turn this into rock into bread and Jesus is like, what is wrong with you? I committed to this. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. And like, even with Joseph and his brothers, when they threw him in the pit, they went back and they deceived his father, and they lived a life of deception which left them in misery for a long while. Okay, and so you want to be careful about throwing your yes around. Okay, I have some people from the Bible that I looked up, and I got two in the old and two in the new, so... This is going to show all four things in all of their lives. Abraham said yes to God, and he immediately got a name change and had to leave his family. Relationship. That's relationship. That's messing with his relationship. He got a newfound relationship with God, and he the relationship with his family. That entire dynamic, cha dynamic change. I really don't like people calling me anything other than my name unless we have a relationship. You know, some people do it, and I'm, I throw them looks. I really do, because I don't know who you talk to. No, I need help, right? <laughs> my name is Robbie. That's what my parents named me. You know, so I don't have a problem with that. I have a few people in this world that have garnered a nickname for me, and I will allow them to use it, but I really just don't like it. I really don't like it. That's funny. One time I told an aunt that, she used to, please don't nobody call me this. She used to call me Susie Gal my whole life. I'm like, Susie Gal? I'm like, what? So one night we were at a picnic. Right. She, one night we were at, one day we were at a picnic, and she was older. I said, I said, Cousin Samella, that was her name. I said, um, I really don't like you calling me Susie Gal. I'm good and grown now. She said, yeah, well, Susie Gal. It don't matter, because that's what I called you all your life, and that's what I'm going to call you till the end. She said, it don't matter. I cracked up. I said, you know what? I tried. I tried. <laughs> that was a little sad step. I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, so he had to leave his family and go where God told him. He took Lot, which caused problems in some ways, but he gained a long-desired son. 
His relationship was so good with God that he was willing to give up that son in sacrifice. The son's relationship was so good with Abraham that he went willingly to the sacrifice, believing his father that God would provide. So that relationship is all in Abraham's yes. Abraham was looking forward to being the father of many nations. He said yes to that. And so this relationship dynamic constantly changed for him. Love. Love is all throughout Abraham's journey. His love for his nephew, whom he took when God said, leave your family. When God said, leave your family, he meant everybody. But Lot apparently had a relationship and loved his nephew so much, he took him with him. And Sodom and Gomorrah sort of like made Lot a little sad, made, probably made him wish he just stayed back. <laughs> but, you know, it's a relationship, it's love. And his love for his wife, he loved his wife. Uh, they were living, they was just moving on along, living life. God said, you guys are going to have a son. Sarah thought it was funny because of the age and the time that had passed. But the promise was true. You know, the thing about it is Isaac didn't come along right away. And I was laughing. Okay, I need Jesus, and I hope I don't get in trouble for this. I was laughing this afternoon because I said, God said, you're going to have a baby. And she thought it was like, no. Nah. And you know what? They tried. They tried. But it wasn't working. And so she sent um, Abraham into her maid servant. And so a baby was born. So that's her deception. She trying to speed God along. She trying to change the results of this. This is not the promised child. I said the promised child is going to come through you. It ain't coming through her. So I, I ain't nothing on that. So y'all might as well get back busy. Because Isaac is coming, you know? And the thing about it is they had to get a new relationship going. It had probably been years since they had uh, did what is necessary to <laughs> create, you know, Isaac. So they had to get back into the groove in order for that thing to work. So God said it was going to happen. So they said yes to it, but eventually it did happen. Okay, so you got to learn. Sometimes you have to commit to the commitment. You know, sometimes we just go and, you know, I did my part. But it's still other parts for you. It's still other things for you to go through. It's still other things for you to uh, come up with. So we can't always just say yes and run, do our little part and run. We need to say yes and see, keep on going. Uh, he lied and said that Sarah was his sister. That's deception. You know, Sarah, and, and he did it more than his son even did it. So it's, it's in there. The deception comes. He thought, how many times does deception come in our life where we try to circumvent the yes with deception or tricks, thinking we are helping God out or getting to the end of a thing sooner. Think about that. We circumvent the yes with deception or tricks. That's not going to work. That's not going to work because the still, the end result is the end result. And commitment. Abraham held on to the promise of God and was committed to becoming the father of many nations. At no time did he turn his back on God. He was an old man when God came to see him to deliver the promise of the child. He was so excited. He got up and he ran out there and killed an animal, put it on his back and ran back in here. He was committed to that thing. You know what I'm saying? He's like, we're going to make agreement and covenant right now. I'm going to feed y'all. He did everything that God told him and he was truly committed and reaped the wealth of the promise. Your yes should bring you some type of a benefit. In the story of Joseph, Joseph said yes to a dream, which became his dream. It's not something he sat down and thought up and said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. The dream came to him, and he said yes to it. It was not a dream that he had for his life, but one that came to him, and he just jumped on board. He had no idea it was going to test his relationship with his family. 
and the deception that it brought to his father, which caused grief to Joseph and his father. Had his father known that he wasn't dead, he probably would have turned over every rock in, in the world just trying to find his son. He had no idea the levels of commitment he would have to pursue to keep the dream alive. He committed to Potiphar, he committed to the prison, and he committed to Pharaoh. The reward of love that would come to him in the end was more than he knew. He was reunited with his family, especially his father, whom he loved so much. His reward was good living in the end. And from this, yes, Joseph gained endurance, patience, and expertise. He was constantly interpreting dreams, which led to his deliverance. His yes was functioning. The action for which a person or thing is specifically fitted, used, or responsible. Joseph was a dream master at the end of it. Okay? He was a dream master. His mastery of his dreams set up the best retirement system you could ever have. <laughs> he put his effort into it. Your yes is going to teach you some things. Amen? So Mary, the mother of Joseph, we see her committed to the word with the yes to the impregnation, and she was there at the cross. The relationship is obvious with the birth of Jesus, but her relationship with her cousin caused life to come back in a shaky situation. John was sitting dormant in Elizabeth's stomach for six months until he heard Mary greet Elizabeth. At that point, Elizabeth received the Holy Spirit and comfort in knowing that her baby was going to be all right. What better relationship is that? Mary even received a replacement son when Jesus died at the cross. Her story does not include obvious deception, but there was omission. There really doesn't, they didn't run around telling everybody how Jesus came about, but... Omission can be deceiving in certain circumstances. And love. She was the mother of Jesus. She carried love. Her love for Joseph was strong enough to sustain the situation. Joseph loved her, and he, she loved him. He didn't, be, he didn't just kick her to the curb like, that ain't mine. No, he said, okay, God has spoke to me, and I'm giving you my yes. So he protected them. He protected them. He put himself into that situation, and he walked with it. She was the greatest yes of them all, bringing forth the Son of God. Her yes improved her life beyond measurement. Your yes should bring improvement. Jesus. <laughs> the biggest commitment of all. He left heaven. Lord Jesus, who would do that? You know what I'm saying? He knew what was going on down here. He told God the Father, I will go save them. He came the way that we all do, which is through the birth canal. He had to commit to changing his form. He had to commit to being told what to do by humans. He had to commit to holding his power until the appropriate time. He had to commit to teaching stubborn, rebellion, religious people the ways of God. He truly committed to the cross, even though he tried to get out of it. He committed to the thing till death. We see his commitment. Relationship. He is our elder brother. His relationships are continuing every second. Every time somebody says, I accept you, God, his relationships keep going and going and going. So his yes in this relationship to God is creating a world. Amen. Every moment, our sisters and brothers are sharing his love with somebody. He took time to be with the, in his relationship situation. He took time to be with the disciples and teach them. He took time to do miracles and encourage people. He sent the Holy Spirit who still communicates with him on our behalf. His relationship to the Father is seamless to the point they are one. Amen. Deception. The Pharisees were always trying to trip him up. Ultimately, the, the ultimate deception was the kiss. Generally, a kiss was a greeting. 
But in that instance, it was a death warrant. Love. God is love. He loved his family, friends, strangers, disciples, and most of all, God who sent him on this journey that his yes would take him on. Your yes should be accomplishing something. Jesus' yes truly reflected, may it be so. He reconciled the world back to God. I want to go back to the story of Elizabeth right quick. She received her miracle and she was in limbo. She was sitting there. Her husband wasn't talking. The baby wasn't moving. She's sitting there just holding on to her miracle. And when Mary came, she had gotten her miracle. And so when they got together, life came back into the situation. Life came into the situation for Elizabeth because her baby leaped and she understood that everything was going to be all right. And Mary was okay because she had somebody she could go through this with. She had somebody she could, so she, they got a good relationship out of this. I can imagine they sat there and talked all kinds of stuff. You was like, oh my God, <laughs> I can't even imagine. So Mary and Elizabeth shows the power of a combined yes. They both said yes to the miracles and they both received portions of God that some of us will never receive. Her husband was placed, um, Elizabeth's husband, was placed in a position of a humility by having to accept the word of God and be quiet. He was one of those that the deception can come from within because he wanted to debate the angel of the Lord. He wanted to say, we call our kids thus and so. And he wanted to say, well, you know, is this really what we're going to do? And look, just shut up. That's really what it say. Just shut up. You're going to be quiet till this baby get here because this baby has a purpose in relation to, to Mary's purpose. If John didn't go forth and say, repent for the time of the Lord is at hand, you know, how would they receive him? So their purpose is uh, made up all the way. Zacharias was a reluctant yes. That's that delay we get into asking our friends, praying for 50 days, all of that. It's a reluctant yes. We still do it. But guess what? We could have accomplished so much more if we did it so much sooner. Yes is a relationship, commitment, love, and we have to be aware of deception on our and others' parts. A good way to get an understanding of your meaning of yes is to look at your life and determine if you said yes or say yes to something and one, you don't do it. Mm. What value does your yes have? When you leave people hanging, they sort of ain't got nothing to do with you much. You know, what value does your yes have? And what trust are you building? I can't, mm, no, I don't, mm -mm, nope, I'm not going to ask them. They not even on my list. You, <laughs> no trust. You're not building any trust, not building any kind of relationship. And what damages did you cause someone else by not performing? This was a little bitty story that came back to my mind this afternoon, but it was sort of like a catch-22. I, I do, I used to cater. And so I have baked cakes and all that good stuff. And this individual had asked me for a cake and it was going to be for the holiday season and everything. But he asked me for the cake. I never heard back from him. I never said anything. So I think we had a, this was at a different church. Um, we had a Thanksgiving server and, his, and he walked up and he asked me where the cake was. I was like, uh, um, um, uh, I didn't make it because I tried to call you. I didn't, you know, we couldn't get in. There was no communication. He's, he was mad because he had promised this cake to this gathering he was going to. And I was like, that ain't my fault. You should have communicated with me. And if the cake ain't hard, it would have been an easy thing to do. But it was still damage to him because his word is now a little bit messy. But it was damage to me because I tried, but I know you're going to blame it on me. You know, so <laughs> we have to be careful if we don't perform our yes and it damages other people. The second thing is, what if you don't do your yes to the best of your ability? This type of yes 
how does it make you feel? Did you get the best results that you could have? Was it worth it and the time and the effort or lack of effort that you put into it? Lots of times people say yes and they'll throw something at you. It ain't the best, you know? So your yes is supposed to be a functioning word to create a thing so that it may be so. So you have to be considerate and figure out when you're giving your yes, what you mean. And the last one is, did you do it with your whole heart? If you put everything into it and it was a great success, it has an echoing effect on the purpose it accomplished. An echoing effect is that it has a good reputation and it will go forward and people will speak highly of it and it will get around. So building your reputation, a guest with a good reputation has many returning benefits. This is the best type of yes. It's a yes that is sanctioned of God, you and the other party. And that type of yes shows God's glory, a yes with a purpose. As you look at these three situations, the outcomes are totally different and with different effects on your life. Your yes should come from within. If you don't mean it, don't say it. People rely on your yes. You don't know the chain reaction of your performance or lack of performance. Yes means that I am agreeing to function in a purpose that would allow things to be so by my bonding to the purpose or person that has to get it accomplished. That's a little bit of combination of all those definitions, but it's a good thing. So everybody takes things so lightly these days, but everything has a purpose and a function. So the kingdom of God is suffering because of bad yeses. The kingdom is operating on willingness instead of capability. You should not volunteer or say yes if you can't do it or do not have the resources to get it done. Now I'm going to put a little disclaimer here because some people have to take the willing. Some people have to take what's necessary and these people learn and they get things done. So don't take it as an ultimatum, but if you can't do it, if you have no intention of do it, don't say yes. The kingdom is so shaky because we are operating on a learning curve. That's serious, ain't it? Because we have people that's capable and we have people that are willing. And so if a person that is not capable is in a good, a serious position, it's going to take longer to get stuff done because they got to figure everything out. Once they get it going and get it rolling, it's good. But in the interim, it's like, okay, you missed step three and four out of a 15-step process. And sometimes your yes takes a detailed 15-step process. So it's a learning curve. The willing, listen to this. This is what he gave me. The willing are out there doing the best they can, and the capable are making comments without commitment. Is that serious? That means a lot of people are just doing stuff. But you know you got the gifts and the talents. You know you are capable. But guess what? 12.30, 2.30, I'm out. Okay? What, that goes back to your relationship. That goes back to your love. That goes back to your commitment. Don't be pressured into a yes. I don't know why he had me put that on. The, that's all it said. Don't be pressured into a yes. I, I didn't go any further with that. Because sometimes people get pressured into a yes, and it's not a good situation. So keep your relationship right with God, and you will be okay. I had major yeses in my life that changed it. When um, the job I retired from, when they told me what it was, I was really shaky. I really and truly wasn't comfortable doing it. And it was so weird. This is back in the day, y'all. I was out uh, at a happy hour. And I was sitting there talking to this individual, and I told him, you know, about the job or whatever. He looked at me so plainly. He said, if you don't do it, somebody else will. That thing sort of like shook me because I was like, that is very, very true. I had the option of either doing the same type job on the phone or going in the field to do it. 
in the field, you got a whole bunch more money and a whole lot more perks. So if I stayed, stood behind the phone, I still, probably would still been sitting there. But I took the job in the field. I'm sorry, y'all. I got allergies. Ain't nothing wrong with me, okay? So <laughs> I just felt that come at me. Ha. So um, I took it. And I've been retired for two years. So I'm glad that, yes, turned into a good thing for my life. You know what I mean? So it's really interesting in regards to your yes. You have to be in God's face. You have to understand. You think, you know, sometimes you're sitting there in conversations with people and, you know, you come up with a yes real quick and then you dread it. That's because you didn't, you didn't think about it. And so it's very important that we think about our yeses. This is important. Ask God when a yes is up. Because you can get stuck in something that he has released you from and your yes can, cannot come because you are stuck with somebody else's yes. Isn't that serious? Keep your ear tuned to God in these instances and he will give you permission to make other dreams come true, but he will also release you so that yours may come true also. So I ask you again, what is yes? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So um, I'm glad that I got to able to do this. I'm going to relay this story. I know Apostle Lenise not, you know, aware of this, but I had did this, and so she texts me about 4.30 and asks me, you know, you okay? You still doing it? You all right? And guess what? I was like, hey, if she wanted to, she could. No. Check it out. I had to reel that thing back in. I said, did you just see what happened? I said, that deception came at me to make me want to stop and not do what I said I was going to do and mess with my yes. Make mess with my <laughs> She just said her husband told me, check on you. But you know, but see, that comes with reputation too. You know, if I say yes, you guarantee the yes. You know, sometimes it might be slow. You know, sometimes I might, you know, a lot of people come up at me with 27 things. I might get 22 or 23 of them done. But those four of them, you came in between 22 and 24 so fast, I can't, I can't remember what you said. So, I'm, okay, you remind me, you nudge me. It's not that my yes is not a yes. It's just sometimes I need to help, you know, some help. So, uh, that story cracked me up because I was like, oh, yeah, you know, if she want to, let her but that was the deception. So a yes is a yes, and I love it. So we say yes to God. It's our job to, one, share him with the world. You know, share him with the world because it makes a big difference. Our yeses have changed our lives. Why couldn't somebody else's yes change theirs? And so we need, yes is like, a yes is like money, you know? I happen to... Um, been offered some opportunities, and I said, you know, yes to it, but I've been slow about getting into it. And that's delaying me. So I have to get what's necessary to make it happen. So at this point in the service, I want you all to just think to God. Think to him. When I say think to him, you're turning your mind on him, you're asking him, you say, Lord, has my yes been a true yes? Some situation that you may have, some situation that you may have encountered, and your yes is still out there. Sometimes you got to recall those yeses, and you have to make sure that you honor them because that's a part of honor. You know, I had another, I don't know where I put this one. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not in this. I had another email. As after I finished this, I said, I'm done. But I kept emailing myself certain little passages and stuff, and I put them in here. Um, but some of them, I, I had another email, and it has things. But a yes is respect. Yes, your yes is respect for the person that asks you, the, the person's position, or the purpose. So your yes is respect. So you have to think on that. 
you have to think on that. So are you respecting the yes? Are you respecting the situation that has come forth? So I just want you all to say, Lord God, my yes will be yes from this point on. Amen. That will help. That will make a difference. I was feeling some kind of way, literally, because my message was not in regards to everything that's going on right now. But in essence, it is. Because if you commit to the situation that's going on right now and you say yes to a situation, it's your job. If you are out in a protest and you see somebody go get a secret brick, you say, hold it. No, 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 no. That's not what we're here for. You know what I'm saying? Our yes is to make our uh, situation better. So you have to think on things like that. You know, am I committed to being true? Am I committed to it? Because truth will make things, you'll stop things when you see it ain't right. You know, you'll stop them. Oh, Lord, I thank you so very much for this day, Lord God. You are amazing and loving God, Lord God. And I thank you for this time before your people, Lord God. I hope they heard something or got something that will help them in their decisions as they go forward, Lord God. Understanding that their yes is an action word. Their yes is functioning, Lord God. Their yes is making things to be so. They are specially fitted for the positions and the uh, processes and things that they have to do, Lord God. Let their yes be yes and their no be no. Lord God, let no deception come in, Lord God. Let us recognize it readily, Lord God. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you said yes Jesus, you said yes on the cross. You said yes to coming. You said yes to our salvation. And we thank you for this, Lord God. We thank you that we will look over the relationship before we give our yes. We will look over the commitment before we give our yes. We will look over the love, Lord God. We will do and operate in love, Lord God. And we will definitely watch for the deceiver. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm done. Now. There are a couple of people in the room, and I'm going to prophesy to them. Um, our media team. Okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> I wasn't sure if y'all was watching. But, um, Denise, I was so glad that you danced because I see it, as I said earlier, it, it brought me a sense of calmness, you know. But there are things in you that you have been wrestling with. And they are things that God told you to do long ago. You try to figure out if I should pull it out now. Is this the time for it or not? God is telling you, you have yes in you. All you have to do is activate it. You put your hand on project by project, and once it gets going, you'll start another. And once it goes, you're going to have multiple streams of income because of your yes. Your yes is intertwined in your dance. I know you have different products and stuff like that, but there's still some other things. There's people you have to go dance before and things like that. So your yes is already approved by God. Amen. Oh, Chris and Lenise, God said, your yes happened at the altar. You guys decided that uh, we don't care what nobody say. We are going to make this relationship work. We're going to commit to it. And your relationship sort of happened a little quick, didn't it? <laughs> See, and that was the yes to God. And he is saying, all you have to do is tell me. All you have to do is tell me. Tell me what you want. Tell me how you want it. Tell me when you want it. And the yes is already there. Amen. Amen. You know what? Um, uh, this is terrible, ain't it? <laughs> I need Jesus. Help me, y'all. Um. Brian, right? The other day when Will was ministering, he called you by your uh, your rap name. And I was like, oh, yeah, they did used to call him that. But <laughs> God is saying, it's time for you 
to just stand up and walk in it. 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 He said, you took some side trails. They were beneficial, but he said, I still needed you to do this. And you put it to the show, and you did what you felt you needed to do. He said, if you walk in what you hear me tell you to do, the world is yours. Things that you've put down will come back and doors will open up and people will call your name. He said, 